Hi, I'm Matt Robinson and I work for the charity Together for Change um, and we're here in St Peter's Hillfields um, and I run a project working with uh, newly arrived asylum seekers and refugees. Um, the aim of our project is to kind of create social opportunities that bring people together. So we run yeah. uh, English groups, uh, conversational classes, football sessions, football teams actually um, and we also have a church that meets here on Sunday night. It started um, five or six years ago, I think, when I was volunteering at the Refugee Centre here in Coventry, and um, one of the guys said to me, um, he said, Matt, this country is amazing because we arrive here and we get given a roof over our head, we can NHS support if we're sick, if we need a lawyer, we can get some support. But he said that all of the people that we know, it tends to be on a kind of professional client basis. And he basically said, how do we, I want to make friends here that are not just from my own country, but with other people. But how do we do it when I don't speak the language, I don't know the culture so well? Um, so that's what inspired, inspired this work to start. So we try and run uh, yeah, sort of social activities that are kind of like a halfway between, it's not quite a formal English course, but equally it's not quite initially like hanging out with your friends that kind of spaces that bring people together and then hopefully start to build friendships and relationships. And how can you be further supported by, by other churches in the city? Yeah, I mean, I'd say that my... My heart is that not only that people feel welcome, but that they feel that they belong. And I think the two are quite different. Mm. Um, and the second, I think it's a bit easy, it's a lot easier to welcome somebody, but actually make somebody feel like they belong, they have ownership over something. Um, I think it's a bit tricky. But that's what we really want to do is kind of, a lot of people of I mean, most, a large majority of asylum seekers, it tends to be younger males, um, I guess because the journey is often so dangerous. Um, and a lot of these guys have had to leave their families behind to come here often feel very isolated, very lonely, as my, my friends from Sudan said, you know, how do you make friends here? So I think for me the, the greatest impact is when you get a message saying that I feel like I have a new family here um, and that, that for me is kind of, that's the ultimate goal. Fantastic, yeah, yeah. that is so good and so good to hear. Mm. So obviously being a church, uh, church organisation or linked to church, how does faith impact this work? Uh, take place here at St Peter's uh, and, and what evidence of God's provision have you seen? Well it's been a bit of a crazy 15-16 uh, months so about in about November December 2020 um, I had a flat tire uh, with my car I uh, had to get a new one sorted realized I left my phone at home so I couldn't just you know aimlessly scroll for the half hour that I was there so I thought well, I may as well pray. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to say there was more uh, I'd love to say I've been praying and fasting for months on end but I have to confess I hadn't uh, but Ask God, you know, Lord, what, what, talk to me, where, where, where should we go? And he really brought to mind some of the guys, especially in the hotels. Um, there are three hotels in our city housing um, asylum seekers and emergency accommodation, but they tend to be there for several months generally. Um, but it's only really set up for like 48, 72 hours sort of thing. Mm -hmm. but, um, and I knew quite a few of the guys in there were, were Christians, maybe from Eritrea or Ethiopia. Um, but during the pandemic, I uh, had been unable to get to church, their own church, there is no Eritrean Orthodox Church here in Coventry, but it, it had closed down, I think they meet at community centre. Online church was quite difficult to access, yeah. um, with the internet and that sort of thing, so I just felt God say, we should start a little home group, a little Bible study, um, on a very small scale, just to kind of have some, a place to talk about faith. Mm -hmm. um, and that started, we started meeting at St James, Stitchell, my, my church, in just before Christmas 2020. Um, uh, with about four or five of us, and that's what I thought. This is—it's uh, kind of just grown and grown as more people um, have heard about it and got involved. Now we have sort of, we meet here on Sunday night now in Hillfields. Um, we get sort of between thirty and forty, sometimes fifty people um, coming to coming to our church, and we try and I guess like a fresh expression of worship. So we try and do things that are a bit more accessible for people from multilinguistic backgrounds. Fantastic. Um, How can the church in the city pray for the work here at St Peter's Hillfields? Yeah, I think, I think it'd be really good to pray, especially for those who are in the asylum system who are just waiting for... The, the, the system's got worse over COVID, the, the delays have got longer, um, undoubtedly, so people are now sort of two, three years minimum before they get <clears throat> a decision on whether they'll be allowed to stay, and in that time you're not allowed to work, you're not allowed to bring your family over, you're very, very restricted in what you can do, um, and it's a really difficult... Um, period and people have been through so much mm. uh, mental health I'd say is a major crisis. So we can really pray for um, for those who are struggling with you know, isolation and loneliness and, and depression. Um, 
And if people feel passionate having <clears throat> seen this video or having, having understood what you've said today and they, they have an interest in, in helping asylum seekers, refugees, what do you think they should do in relation to this? Uh, I mean, you can get in touch with me um, if, you go, if you contact St Peter's Hillfields. Um, we'll uh, get in touch and we'll try and work out how we can work. I think my, my real passion is to see um, the way we do in St Peter's and, and St Francis Radford, they do similar, uh, similar work as well. Um, it's just to kind of try and multiply that across the churches that people can, in their own areas can feel, yeah, who've come from and come through so much and left so much behind can actually try and find, we can never replace the family that people have left behind, um, but maybe we can try and build something new.